Alif Lam Mim. These are the isolated letters of the Quran which appear this in the beginning of 29 surahs of the Quran. In three surahs only single letter comes. Qaf, Noon, Qaf wal Quran al Majid, Noon wal Qalam wa ma yasturun, Sad wal Quran al Zikr. Then in some there are two letters, Hamim, Taha, Yasin. In some there are three letters, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Ra. And in some there are four letters, Alif Lam Mim Ra, Alif Lam Mim Sad. And only two, there are five. Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Sad, Ha, Mim, Ain, Sin, Kaf. And the meanings of these letters nobody knows. They are a secret between Allah and His Messenger. Although much has been said about these letters. But the consensus, general consensus is that nobody knows the real meanings with sure. There are certain judgments people have guessed something, but nothing definite. You can't be sure of those meanings. Zalikal kitab bafi. This is the book of Allah. Al kitab. This is the book. What does it mean? The book of Allah. La bafi. There's no doubt in it. No doubt in it about it's being revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is no doubt in its contents. Its contents are also about doubt. And its revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also about doubt. Hudal lil muttaqeen. This is the guidance for the God-fearing. But I discussed this word taqwa in my Sunday lecture. Taqwa, you know, although generally piety, godliness, holiness, different words are used, but actually meaning that to save yourself. Muttaqeen, people who want to save themselves. Themselves what? From what? From the fire of hell, number one. Displeasure of Allah, number two. And basically, they have a moral sense within them. And they want to avoid and save themselves from evil. If this moral sense is active within them, then actually they will always be in search of the truth, in search of what we shall do. Those people who had given those, you know, who had prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, sirat al lazina anamta alayhim, it was their desire, it was their own search. They wanted to have the guidance. Now actually this is the relationship between Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Baqarah. You ask for guidance, hudal lil muttaqeem. This is the guidance. The guidance is being given to you. And these are the do's and do's. Do these things and don't do these things. Go this way, don't go this way. There is danger this way. This is the safety. This way you are safe. So actually this guidance is given here, Hudal lil muttaqeem. But as I discussed in that lecture, although we find in the 23rd section of this very surah, Hudal lil nas, this has the guidance for all humanity. But you know, only those people will be able to avail of his guidance who have in themselves the search for truth and guidance, who want to have guidance. People who don't want to have any guidance, they will not be able to avail themselves of the guidance that Quran is giving. If somebody is not hungry, he will not, you know, look towards any food. This, that food might be very nourishing and very tasty, but he has no hunger. He can't take it. So actually there should be a hunger, then only you know what food is and how valuable it is, how much I need it. That is actually the need for guidance is taqwa. Because you want to save yourself from going astray. You want to save yourself from evils. You want to save from self from doom on the doomsday. If that desire is there only, then you will be able to avail of the guidance of the Quran. And who are those muttaqeen? Allazina yuminuna bil ghayb. Those who believe in the unseen, who know that the reality lies beyond the realm of our senses. Our senses, you know, they are very limited. And the real, the all the basic realities, they lie beyond. Just as Confucius, you know, a very famous thinker of China, he has been reported to have said, there's nothing more real than what cannot be seen and that, that there is nothing more certain than what cannot be heard. Things which are not visible by three, these eyes, which cannot be heard through these ears, they are the most real things. 
actually what we have this within the realm of our senses this is a very shallow superficial part of reality so this is the basic thing that if somebody he denies no there's nothing beyond our perception then he will not be able to avail of the guidance of this quran only such a person who understand who knows that our senses these you know they can reach but to very to a very li limited extent the reality lies beyond it you may know bil ghaib wa yuqimun as salah and then they establish prayers because that reality the al haq allah subhanahu wa taala now you should have some contact with him some communication with him and to have a regular communication with him you must establish prayers wa bimma raqnahum yunfiqun and whatsoever we have given them they spend out of it spend out for charity for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala for the for the spreading of the message of allah subhanahu wa taala for making the deen of allah supreme wal ladhina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik and those who believe in what has been revealed and sent down to you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not only you but they believe also on what was sent before they believe in torah also they believe in injil also they believe in zabur also and they believe that the prophets have been given these revelations and guidances before quran also wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun here you know we find the word is changed not you will know but you can know about the hereafter they are convinced they are sure they are sure that this life is not all human life the real human life is in the hereafter that is not the end of our existence is just the gate towards the eternity because after death you know there is going to be resurrection and after that resurrection wa inna hala jannatul abada aw la narun abada it's eternity eternal existence so actually death is the gate to eternity actually they have they are, they are convinced they have the yaqeen wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim this ala is very important here these are the people who are on the guidance from their lord they are already on the guidance and they will be increased in their guidance but they are already in the guidance and they are the people who will be successful who will reach their final goal that is falah now please note here what these ayat denote is that because quran was being revealed for last 12 years before the revelation of these ayat there were people who had taken the guidance of quran they were transformed their characters their sira they have been you know and they were practically present these ayat are practically pointing towards those people they are the people there is abu bakr so look to him he is the fruit of this quran you know every every tree is known by the fruit it bears the guidance of this quran has produced a, a jamaah a group a community of people like abu bakr umar usman talha zubair go and see they are the people who have benefited themselves with the guidance from the guidance of this quran and the quran you know has produced a certain community who have these characters allazina yu'minuna bil ghaib wal yuqimuna as salah wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun wal ladina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim wa ulaika humul muflihun so this is actually the tawilul khas when these ayat were revealed as if these ayat were pointing towards the people who muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had prepared by the hard work of 12 years their training their tazkiya their tarbiya and through this the teaching of this quran yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikmah the teaching of this quran and hikmah has produced it a people a community and these are these people who whose qualities and attributes are given here but if you infer generally what will be the inference if anybody wants actually to avail of the guidance of the quran he must take to this path first he must produce in himself the qualities that are being given here as if they are the precondition to avail the guidance of the quran 
if you want to tread on the path that Quran wants you to tread, these are the fundamental conditions, rather we should say preconditions, that you have to fulfill in order to avail yourself fully with the guidance of the Quran.